Greetings fellow carbon-based bipeds. I am Scott Rose and you are watching Explosions and Stuff. Today, thanks to a request from Jay Bond, I'll be reviewing the 1987 film Deadly Prey, starring Ted Pryor, David Campbell, Fritz Matthews, and Cameron Mitchell. An overview of the film? Colonel Hogan runs a group of mercenaries that gets their training by kidnapping random people off the street and hunting them in the woods. However, when they took Mike Danton, they bit off more than they could chew. It's one man against an entire army as Danton fights his way to freedom and revenge. The pros of this movie? Well, first of all, this movie has just hilarious overacting. It is just fantastic. These people are trying to act, and it's obvious. And normally it would look bad, but in this case, it's just great, and it helps make the movie. They also had over-the-top fights. Like, at one point, Danton punches a guy in the face, knocks him on the ground, picks, him, picks up his entire body, and just slams him horizontally against a tree. It's just freaking hilarious. It's like, that would never happen in a real fight, but it looks awesome. It makes Danton look like a true badass. Also, this movie had very well choreographed fights, considering what they had to work with. This was a low-budget movie, and they didn't have a lot of money for the choreographed fights or for a lot of stunt doubles. So for what they had, they did a great job with the fight scenes. And part of what made this movie what it was is that everyone involved, all the actors, all the crew, took this movie completely seriously. They were trying to make a serious action movie. They were trying to make it great, trying to make a great action movie with all sorts of gunfights and explosions and battles and a great story and all that. And that is part of the reason this movie works as well as it does. The cons of this movie? Well, while the fight scenes were well choreographed and they were well designed for what they had to work with, they were poorly shot. Like, there were times when, because of the camera angle, you could see that he was missing a punch by a mile. There was absolutely no physical contact. And that really hurt the movie. Also, while some of the acting, well, most of the acting was over the top, there was the occasional person who was really stiff and robotic. That really took me out of the film. Come on, guys, you have to have some consistency. If most of the guys are going to be over the top, then have all of the guys be over the top. Really push that over the topness. And I get they're trying to make it serious. They're trying to do a serious film. But really, when you have that kind of disparity between the two different types of acting, it really hurts the movie. Also, this movie had a good number of audio issues. By that, I mean the volume, mainly. Like, at some moments, they'd be talking and the volume would be really high, and then they'd cut to a different camera angle at, during the same conversation, and the, the volume would be much noticeably lower. Little things like that really hurt it. I had to sit there with my thumb on the volume control of my remote and keep adjusting the movie. So either the volume I could hear wasn't so quiet that I couldn't hear it, or it wasn't so loud that my neighbors were complaining about it. My biggest issue with this movie, though, was there were so many just convenient situations. Like, oh, these two guys are running through the woods, Danton and, you know, guy who looks kind of like Tim Curry with a mullet. They run into each other, and they're like, oh, wait, we're best of friends because you saved my life in Nam, so I'm not going to kill you. Here, have some water. Why did they run, run into each other? Because the plot needed them to. No other reason, just plot. Also, at one point, Danton's running along this ridge, and there's this one random pile of boulders that's just conveniently there where there's no other rocks. And there just happens to be a bunch of the mercenary guys down at the bottom of that hill in complete path of those boulders conveniently just being there. So Mike Danton just runs up and conveniently pushes these convenient boulders down, and it just plows over all, plows over all those convenient little mercenary guys Way too much convenience in this movie. Seriously, it's like, ooh, we need these things to happen to the plot. So here, have some convenient rocks and some convenient sticks and some convenient traps and convenient people. Way too much convenience in this movie.
my favorite action scene of the movie, Mike Danton cuts off a guy's arm and beats him to death with the wet end of it. I don't think I really need to explain it any further than that. My overall thoughts on the movie? First of all, I think a good alternative title for this movie would have been Muscular Men with Mullets, because every single main character was a really buff guy in either a tank top, a t-shirt, or no shirt at all, and they had a long, flowing mullet. That being said, this movie has a huge cult following, and it's very easy to see why. I give it two thumbs up. Yeah, this movie has its flaws, but that's why it's great! This is a so bad, it's good type of movie, and I don't know anyone who's watched this movie and not been entertained by it. Also, I would like to thank Jay Bond for introducing me to this movie in the first place. I absolutely loved it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel for new action movie reviews posted every week. Also, if you have any recommendations for movies you would like me to review in the future, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and have a nice day.